Today we're going to make a simple 2D character controller in Unity using the new input system. So before we get started on the coding, which you don't need to have any experience for, I'll explain everything as I go along. We first need to download the new input system. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, I show you how to set up Unity and how to make your own level. And I also installed the input system. So if you go to Window, Package Manager, and then you type in here, input system, it's going to pop up here. And all you want to do is I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed, it's going to say install down here. And if this is not showing up, then you want to make sure you have show preview packages enabled under the advanced tab. So the first thing that we want to do is make a new input action. And to do that, first we will go to the assets folder and we will make a new folder by right clicking and pressing create folder. And I'm going to call this folder scripts. I recommend making a scripts folder in any of your Unity projects to make sure all your scripts are in one place. So let's go into that scripts folder and then we're going to right click and we're going to go to create and then input actions. And so now we can name this input action. I'm just going to call it player controls. So now you double click it and then this window will pop up. And right now it doesn't show anything. So we have to make a action map and what an action map is, it provides controls for different circumstances or levels. So for example, I can make an action map by pressing this plus button and then I can name this land. So I can activate the land action map whenever I'm on land. And then I can have a water action map whenever I'm in the water. So different control sets for different circumstances. But for now, we're, we're only going to have one set of controls. So we're just going to call it land. And so here in the actions, here are the actual controls that we will be enabling. So right now they gave us a new action already here. So we can change the name by double clicking and we're going to name it move. And so then on our right, we have the action type. And for the action type, we want a pass through value and a pass through value just means that unity will just listen on the keyboard for this value. It won't try to determine where this value is coming from. And it's useful if you just have one set of controls and for the control type, we'll have a button because we'll just be pressing a button. There's a bunch of other controls here that you can explore more in depth later. So now to add the actual controls, we can add a binding for the controls. So we just press a little plus here and then we can add a binding, but I want to add a 1D axis composite. And what that basically means at, is that it's going to have a negative and a positive value. So we want that because we want the negative value to correspond to going left or pressing a, and we want the positive value to correspond to going right or pressing D. By the way, I'm going to be using the WASD keys. You can use the arrow keys if you want. Um, you can also use both. So I'm just going to name this sideways. So then on the right, we have the path, which is the actual control that it corresponds to. So we just click path and you can search up anything. You can search up arrow keys. Um, it also has controllers, switch controllers, Xbox controllers. So with the input system, what it's really good for is that if you have, if you're porting to a bunch of consoles, you only need one input system and Unity will automatically determine which one to use depending on the console. Okay. So back to the path, if we click it, um, instead of searching for it, we can just press listen. And so I'm just going to be pressing a, and then we just click a keyboard. So now the a key is bound to the negative axis. And then if we press positive and we press path, then listen and press D. Now the D key is corresponding to the positive axis. So this will return a number between negative one and one. If it's negative one, that means we're pressing the A key. If it's one, that means we're pressing the D key. And then I'm just going to um, delete this binding here. And so then we want to add in one more action just by clicking this plus button up here. And we're just going to add in a jump action. And so it's just going to be a pass through button. And then in our binding, we're just going to press path and then listen. And we're going to press the space bar. And that's our 
binding for our jump key. Cool, so now we need to make sure that we press here, save asset. And so that will save the asset to our assets folder right here where we made it. And since we're gonna be making a script for the player controller, we want to generate a C-sharp script from this input action that we can call in our script. So if we click on our action map, on the right we can generate a C-sharp class. And here we have some parameters such as the file and the name. So right now I'm just gonna call this player action controls, probably not the best name. And then we can choose wherever we want to save the file. So for right now, I'm just gonna give it the same name as the class name. And you wanna make sure the file name and the class name are the same because it will not work if they're not the same. And so I'm just gonna save it in this folder. So save and then apply. And so it's gonna be generating this C sharp file for us. So right now we have a new C sharp file. If you double click it, so my screen might be looking a little bit different from yours since I configured it to use Visual Studio Code, which I prefer over the Visual Studio, but doesn't matter, it's the same for writing the code. Okay, so as you see here, this is the generated script and you can see our land action map and then we have our action move and jump. And so basically what Unity will do is that when the move is started, performed, or cancel, it will fire an event. And what we're gonna do in our script is that we're gonna subscribe to that event. And anytime that event happens, we'll call a function in our script and do something. So in our case, once the jump has been performed, so once the user has pressed it and lifted the key from the space, then our script will call that jump function and make the player jump. Awesome, so I'm just gonna minimize this and we are going to make a new script in this scripts folder. Right click, create C sharp script and we are going to call it player controller. And if you're new to Unity and scripting, then C sharp is the language that Unity uses. It's very powerful and very easy to understand. So now that we have this script, we can just double click it. And this is our new script. All right, so this is our player controller script. On the top, we have these using declarations, and basically it allows us to use certain functions from these namespaces, they're called namespaces. So we import these namespaces, and then we can use the functions that they provide for us. So this one is really important using Unity Engine. Without this one, we can't use the Unity Engine functions. And now here, this is our public class, player controller. So this is the name of our class. And then it derives from mono behavior. And mono behavior is what will allow us to use Unity functions. So if we don't put this right after the player controller, then we won't be able to use these two functions down here, which will we will need for the player controller. And deriving from another class basically allows us to use some of their functions that they provide in simple terms. So down here we have two functions that Unity provides us with off the bat. So the start function is called before the first frame update. So in this function, you usually want to declare certain things. So for example, if we go up here and I'm gonna erase this later. If we put in health, then this will represent the player health, but we want to set it in the start function. So all we would do is set health equal to 100 or whatever number we want. So that's just an example of how you would use a start function. Um, you can also use a start function to get certain components so that later you can reference them, which is what we're gonna be doing. So in the update function, that's where we call the player action controls to see if any new movement has been detected. And then after we get the value from the input action, then we update the player accordingly by causing them to move left or right. All right, so let's start with a simple movement script. So I'm just gonna delete these comments because they kind of annoy me. So the first thing that we wanna do is get access to the player action controls so we can get access to whether the user is pressing certain buttons or not. So the first thing I wanna do is put private player action controls and then player action controls 
as the name. So this is just declaring whether it's private or public, meaning we don't want anyone to access this outside of this class. This is the name of the object, which is the player action controls. And this is the variable name. And then we want to make a awake function. So awake runs before start, and it's useful if you want to do things in one script before you do things in another script at the start of the game. So in this awake function, we're going to be instantiating the player actions controls. So we do that by typing the name and then we equal to new player action controls. And this basically makes a new object and it sets it to our variable up here. And then another thing that we want to do for our player actions control that is required is that we have to make an on enable function and on disable function. So this is called by Unity when the script is enabled. So this is gonna be enabled at the start of the game. So on enable, we are going to enable the player actions controls. Cool, so now we have the player action controls enabled and now we can actually call them to see if the player is pressing any buttons. So in the update function, we are going to read this value. So this is a comment. I'm gonna read the movement value. Then I'm going to actually move the player. So to read from the player action controls, we go player action controls dot land dot move dot read value and then inside the read value we put a float because that's what it's going to return and then at the start we're going to say float movement input equals so if you're new to coding this is the object type which is a float it's a type of number this is the variable name and then this is what allows us to read that value. So as you can remember, we have that land action map, then we have that move action, and then we're just reading that float value. Since the whole video was too long, I had to separate it into two parts. So this is the first part of the character controller and it explains the input system. And the next part will be coding the actual movement and the jumping system. So if you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to stay updated on new content and like it. And see you next time. Thank you.